Good evening and welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. I'm Pastor Henry D. Phillips, uh, your teacher. And if you're watching this lesson uh, on YouTube, I want to encourage you to like it and to also share it with somebody. Uh, if you have questions about the lesson, go ahead and put them into the comment section and we'll make sure uh, to answer those for you. And we appreciate any kind of comment that you have for us. So you go ahead and put that down there also. Also, uh, it's a good place to put in prayer requests. We are after, after all called the Open Door House of Prayer. But if you don't want to put your prayer requests into the comment section, you could text it to 209-565-2116. And that number is also going to be in the description of this video. So I just want to thank you for watching and ask that you please subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this from the Open Door House of Prayer. Well, tonight's text is coming from the book of Joshua, chapter 7, verses 1, verses 10 through 12, and then verses 20 through 26. Uh, the lesson title is The Sin of Achan. Now, to tell you the truth, the whole context comes from chapter seven, but in order to allow people to, uh, you know, truly study and for me not to read the whole chapter into people's uh, hearing, we're going to just look at those uh, verses, verse one, verse 10 through 12, and then verse 20 through 26 from the seventh chapter of Joshua. I got a couple of different mics going on here. So, <laughs> all right. So once again, I'm going to read into your hearing Joshua chapter seven, verses one, uh, 10 through 12, and then 20 through 26. But Israel violated the instructions about the things set apart for God. I also got to remind you that I'm reading from the New Living Translation uh, it's definitely going to be different from the King James Version and even the New King James Version. But Israel violated the instructions about the things set apart for God. A man named Achan had stolen some of these dedicated things, so the Lord was very angry with the Israelites. Achan was the son of Carmi, a descendant of Zimri, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah. Verse 10, but the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why are you lying on your face like this? Israel has sinned and broken my covenant. They have stolen some of the things that I commanded must be set apart for me. And they have not only stolen them, but have lied about it and hidden the things among their own belongings. That is why the Israelites are running from their enemies in defeat. For now, Israel itself has been set apart for destruction. I will not remain with you any longer unless you destroy the things among you that were set apart for destruction. Now, I'm going to do something a little uncharacteristic. Usually, I read through all of the verses, but I'm going to stop there at uh, verse 12 uh, and give some context to this. So, uh, a couple of lessons ago, we talked about the fall of Jericho. And so the children of Israel were coming into the land that God had promised Abraham and his sons. And they had spent 400 years in slavery. And then God delivered them uh, using Moses. And then they were just getting ready to come into the promised land. And they were like, oh, wait, God, these people over here in the promised land, they're too big. We don't see how we're going to, and God got mad with Adam and he said, but hey, I'm I'm faithful to my promise. So this generation that didn't think that I could deliver on the promise, you, you guys are going to wander around in the wilderness. And so it's been 40 years and they fight their way up on the east side of the Jordan. And then when God gets ready to give them over into the promised land, he sends, he tells Joshua, who is now the leader, to send some spies. 
send some spies over into Jericho. People of Jericho are afraid. They've locked up their doors. They have these big walls, but God says, I'm going to give you Jericho. And so uh, there was a woman named Rahab that lived in Jericho and that helped out the spies and said, hey, you know, can you save my family? They say, yeah, no problem. They go back to uh, Joshua, tell them all about it. And then God gives Joshua a battle plan. And so they follow the battle plan to the letter. And the walls of Jericho come down and they defeat and they kill everything that they're supposed to. Sort of. Okay, so they they were victorious in Jericho, but something happened that Joshua wasn't aware of at that time. So after they take over Jericho, then they see this town called I. It's spelled A-I, but it's pronounced I. They see this town I, which is sort of the next town over from Jericho. And I is smaller than Jericho, and it doesn't have the size walls that Jericho has. So Joshua does what he did before. He sent out the spies. And the spies came back and said, hey, we, we don't need to trouble everybody to go up here on I. You could just send like a regiment or a brigade and we could take this place. So Joshua sends 3,000 men to take I. And lo and behold, those 3,000 men get beat back. Matter of fact, as they're departing I, 36 men are killed. And so that's where we come to uh, verse 10, when the Lord says, get up. Why are you lying on your face like this? Because Joshua's lying. He had ripped off his clothes. He was he was distraught. And, and God said, what, what are you doing? Because Joshua's like, oh, that you would have just left us on the other side of the Jordan. Why did you bring us here so that everybody could destroy us? And God is saying, get up. Really? Why are you on your face like this? The reason why you weren't successful in I is because you guys broke the covenant. And this was a covenant. He said, hey, there's certain things in Jericho that need to be dedicated to the Lord. And that, that was the word accursed. Uh, certain things that need to be set aside for the Lord. And it, 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 the word accursed seems a little strange, but what it means is set aside or dedicated for something. And so uh, all the gold, all the silver, all of that was supposed to be set aside for God. And then everything else was supposed to be killed or destroyed. But there's this guy named Achan and Achan sees some stuff and he likes it and he takes it. And so now we have the situation where the covenant has been broken. So one of the things that we want to take away from this is that uh, it was one person that sinned, but sin can affect a whole organization. So let's go back to uh, the first verse. It says, but Israel violated the instructions about the things set apart from God. It didn't say Achan violated. It said Israel violated it. And because Achan was a part of Israel, Israel had violated. So God says to, uh, to Joshua, hey, this is what I need you to do. I need you to clean this up. Verse 12, this is why the Israelites are running from their enemies in defeat, because I've removed myself from you guys, because you broke the covenant. So uh, I will not remain with you any longer unless you destroy the things among you that were set apart for destruction. So now you know the stuff is mingled in with y'all stuff, but I'm going to tell you how to figure it out. And so in, in verses uh, 13 through about 15 or so, God tells uh, tells Joshua, I need you to make the people consecrate. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to point out who it is that uh, violated what was supposed to be done. 
So let's pick this up in verse 20. Achan replied, it is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. Among the plunder, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon, 200 silver coins, and a bar of gold weighing more than a pound. I wanted them so much, I took them. They are hidden in the ground beneath my tent with the silver buried deeper than the rest. So Joshua sent some men to make a search. They ran to the tent and found the stolen goods hidden there, just as Achan had said, with the silver ben buried beneath the rest. They took the things from the tent and brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites. Then they laid them on the ground on the pre in the presence of the Lord. Verse 24, then Joshua and all the Israelites took Achan, the silver, the robe, the bar of gold, his sons, daughters, cattle, donkeys, sheep, goats, the tent, and everything he had, and they brought them to the valley of Achor. Then Joshua said to Achan, why have you brought trouble on us? The Lord will now bring trouble on you. And all the Israelites stoned Achan and his family and burned their bodies. They piled a great heap of stones over Achan, which remains to this day. That is why the place has been called the Valley of Trouble ever since. So the Lord was no longer angry. And may the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. So I'm, as I went back over the background, you know, there was this great victory that was had at Jericho. And so one of the other things I, I, I want to uh I guess tell you about is that uh, some of our most vulnerable times come after some of our greatest victories. Uh, I, I, a brother was telling me on Sunday how he knew this man that had survived two airplane crashes, not one airplane crash, but two. See, after the first airplane crash, I wouldn't have. <laughs> I wouldn't have been flying again anyway, but he survived two airplane crashes and now he thinks he's invincible. And sometimes that's what happens with, with us when we experience success. Uh, we, we may have done a very good job in something and uh, we think, nah, I don't, I don't need to study the way that I needed to for that last one, or I don't need to put in, the effort that I did with that last one, because I got the success thing. I got this locked down. But the truth is, is that in order to continue to do the success, we got to continue to do the things that brought us here. For instance, after the three-day fast, some people might have thought, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Hey, I could eat anything I want to. I, you know, I, I had all this spiritual success. But the the thing that brought about the success was the dedication to God, setting aside yourself to God. And so you can still set your side, uh, yourself aside to God without fasting, but we got to be cl uh, clear about this. The key to our victory was that we consecrated ourselves, that we set ourselves aside for God. And when you forget that, then that opens the door. Because uh, there's nothing that sets you up for a fall like pride. And, and matter of fact, there's a, a, a proverb that says, pride goeth before the fall. Anyway, uh, there were some things that were called accursed or some things that were supposed to be dedicated to God. And Achan, who, by the way, his name, his name means troubler. Now, there's some people that are like, oh, gosh, why did this mother call her son Aiken when she knew that it means troubler? I, I think maybe what happened was that Aiken was the person that brought all this trouble on Israel. And afterwards, everybody said, you know what? Aiken means troubler. Don't call your child Aiken because it means troubler. <laughs> so, uh a Jew, he he was sacrilege, occasioned the people to be smitten. He was subsequently stoned. 
Psalms 1 and 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I tell you this because he, I, I want to show the opposite. So the person that doesn't walk with the ungodly, that doesn't stand with sinners, and doesn't sit in the seat of scornful, that person is going to be blessed. So the person that sits or walks with the ungodly, the person that stands with sinners, the person that is seated with the scornful, the opposite of blessed is what they're going to get. Anyway, the people trespass. And I, I already told you that that meant everybody, just one person did it, but because he was a part of this organization, it was everybody that did it. And, uh, and so the children of Israel lost the battle with I because God had removed himself because one person had sinned. And uh, what, what came to me is I remember riding the city line bus one time and, and uh, the bus driver, I was sitting up near her and she found out, I guess I told her I was a teacher and she was like, Hey, what, what this thing, uh, this teacher punished the whole class because a couple of students were doing this. And she was wanting me to agree that that was wrong. And I, I'm going to say in certain situations, uh, it is wrong. But what I told her was, is what you have to understand is that sometimes the culture of the class allows people to do that. You know, if somebody is doing stuff and all the class is laughing, then what the class is saying is, we find what you're doing amusing and we're supporting you in that. So myself as a teacher, I I, do, I feel justified in punishing the whole class. And, and, you know, people, well, it was just one child. And I'm like, well, everybody laughed. Or enough of people laugh that, you know, they earned it for the whole, the whole class. But I'm not saying that that is God's justification for this. I'm just saying that's my earthly knowledge bringing it to this. Because, see, Isaiah 55 says that God's ways are above our ways and his knowledge is way vast than our knowledge. So I'm not, I'm not really sure that that's the reason why God did this, but it, it does give you a little insight into it. So, uh, so Achan took the cursed thing. So the short slide from disobedience to defeat. That's what we, uh, uh, the the lesson series that we've been looking at has been talked about uh, obedience and success. Well, the flip side of that is disobedience and failure. And so uh, Aiken was disobedient in the things that were supposed to be set aside. And so failure happened. So, uh, sin is going to block, hinder, or void the purpose blessings that God has for our life. And we, we got to understand this, that, that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But sometimes God has blessings that are purposed for us. And because of sin, that purpose, that purpose blessing is blocked. Canaan was Israelites promised land, but God would not allow them to inherit it. it, it God wouldn't allow them to go any further into it because sin was in the camp. Uh, in Isaiah chapter one, verses 19 and 20, God says this, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse, and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. See, God don't forget his word. <laughs> he's not He's not a man that he would lie, and he's not the son of man that he should repent. So God said, if you be willing and, obe uh, and obey, be obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. The land is going to take care of you. But 
If you refuse, then you're going to be devoured by the sword. And 36 people died because they went up there against I when God didn't tell them to, which is another lesson that we need to get from this. See, when, when they were going towards Jericho, this big fortified thing, uh, Joshua sought the Lord and how would they should do the victory. Maybe if Joshua had sought the Lord on how they could be victorious over I, this wouldn't have happened. God would have told them up front, I, I, I'm not going to protect you and I. I I'm not going to be with you because you have trespassed. You have broken my covenant. But Joshua didn't do that. So you can see where God can say, hey, the whole tribe of Israel has trespassed. Yeah, it was Achan that 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 stole it was Achan that broke the covenant but joshua you didn't seek me on how you should uh take this victory i could have told you right then and y'all wouldn't have been defeated we we could have we could have rooted out who the people were that had trespassed <laughs> and then he's like get up get up from there it is a uh, uh, like you, you know, one of your children laying there crying and stuff. Like, get up, really. It's not. It's not that serious. Stop being so dramatic. Uh, you disobeyed the instructions. Now I'm going to tell you how you can restore. So, the whole object of this lesson is that we see when we disobey that there's some consequences, and the removal of sin is the path to restoration. So God says, hey, I need you to take care of this. I need you to remove the problem so that I can restore you all, so that I can come back and be with you. Get rid of anything that hinders devotion to God. So, uh, so God tells them, hey, I need you to tell the people to consecrate themselves, and then they're going to come before me tomorrow. And so he he has them come tribe by tribe, and then he points out the tribe. He points out the tribe of Judah. Then he points out the uh, the the family, and he gets closer and closer until it gets down to Achan. I was getting ready to call Achan I. <laughs> All these A's running around here. So he gets to Achan, and... Achan is asked, what, what, what are you doing? And some say to themselves that Achan was, uh, was repenting, but I, I, I want to go ahead and read this to you out of the new King James version. Uh, let's see. So, verse 20. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them, and there and, and there they are, hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. So you got to ask yourself, is this a confession? Yes. Does it sound like he's repentant? I don't know. But uh, he does go through and says, hey, this is what happened to me. Sometimes that'll get your mercy. Sometimes it wasn't. When I saw, when I coveted and took, lusting for things God has prohibited will always result in bad decisions. The best thing that we can do is just not look. I mean, there, there's some 
some scriptural background to this. Uh, for instance, in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 11, verses 2 through 4, it says, And it came to pass in evening tide that David arose off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent messengers and took her. So if David would have averted his glance, you know, he's looking and he saw, and he knew right then I shouldn't be looking at this, but he kept on looking. And then he said to himself, this is, she's beautiful to look upon. He started coveting her. And then he sent messengers to her. Now, it didn't matter to David that she was married. She was married to a guy named Uzziah, who was away at war. So I, I, I'm going to go ahead and tell the story to its conclusion. So the woman's name was Bathsheba, and she gets pregnant. And she tells David, hey, I'm pregnant, and my husband has been away at war. So David, being the king, says, hey, uh, I, I need Uzziah to come back to town. <laughs> and so he comes, and he he's like, surely he's going to go and sleep with his wife, and then, hey, I'm going to be cool with this. But Uzziah says, hey, I, I'm not going home. Why? I, how am I going to go and experience the comforts of home be with my wife when everybody out there is fighting. And uh, so I'm not, I'm, I'm, and David is like, what the, and so cooks up another plan. You know what? I'm going to go and send Uzziah to where the heaviest part of the battle is going. And then after Bathsheba is a, a widow, I'm going to go ahead and marry her. That's called murder. So, so we have where he looked, he coveted, then he took. So now he's doing adultery and then he's doing murder all because he didn't avert his glance. So once again, the, the thing that we need to take away from what Aiken was saying is, hey, I, he's supposed to be fighting the, the people of, of uh, Jericho. I was getting ready to say, don't tell me, don't tell me. He's supposed to be fighting the people of Jericho, and yet he runs, and he looks at all of this stuff, and he's already known. Joshua told everybody, these are the things that we're setting aside for God. But he looked at it, and he's like, this is looking good. And then he coveted it. He wanted it. And then he took it. I'm going to give you one more example of where somebody saw, they desired, they coveted, and then they took. In Genesis, the third chapter, six verse, it says, and when the woman saw, and the woman is Eve, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired, coveted to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat so again god had told adam and eve or well he told adam god told adam you could eat of any tree that's in this garden except for this tree over here which is the tree of uh knowledge of good and evil they could have eaten from the tree of life, but the tree that they were not supposed to eat of is knowledge of good and evil. And they disobeyed that command because she saw, she coveted, desired, and then she took. So the whole thing is that we can avoid disobedience by putting our gaze on the right things. 
1 John 2 and 16 says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So, so they've been found out. So that leads to the punishment. A, uh, Achan was sent to the Valley of Achor and they were going to stone him and the stuff. Now get this. Some of us might have been a little bit uh, sympathetic towards Achan because maybe Achan grew up and he didn't have good things. Maybe he didn't have a fine robe like the Babylonians or maybe he didn't have shekels of, of corn. But they took his oxen, he, they took his donkeys, they took his sheep. Achan wasn't poor. He just saw some stuff and he thought it was nice to look upon and thought, hey, I, I, I could have that. And then he went and he dug a hole in the middle of his tent and put the stuff in it. So Achan brought this trouble upon the house of Israel. And, and this is the other thing that I, I'm not sure if I made clear before, that sometimes we think our sin only affects us. I could do this because all I'm bothering is myself. A lot of, a lot of people uh, that smoke cigarettes are thinking, hey, the only person that's bothering is me. I mean, there's all this research behind cancer that comes from smoking cigarettes. And the person has deluded themselves into thinking, hey, I could do this because all I'm doing is harming myself. But then they don't think about the pollution that's in the air from their smoke and how people have asthma and how uh, children have breathing problems and how that contributes to it. They don't think about how when they eventually get cancer, then they got to go in and put a strain on our health care system. They don't think about how their loved ones are torn apart because, hey, now they're no longer going to be with us because of that temporary pleasure of smoking the cigarette. I, I could do this with other kinds of sins. I, get, I can lay out how sin not only affects the person that's sinning, but actually affects a community, affects a family, even a nation. And so we have the punishment, which is that Achan and his stuff and his family were to be stoned. And so God said, hey, I need you to remove the sin so that I could come back to the nation so there can be restoration. And the way that translates to our lives today, because uh, uh, the wages of sin is death. But God is a forgiving God. Now, I know you're saying, well, he wasn't too forgiving to Achan. And the the Old Testament is called the Old Testament for a reason, because uh, it was an old covenant. There was an old agreement. And so under the old agreement, Achan and his stuff had to die. But the new agreement, the new agreement that's written in the blood of Christ, because Jesus Christ went on a cross and died for our sins is that we ask God for forgiveness and he forgives us. And then we do, we repent. And, and that's why I was looking at Achan. I'm like, that, that, that was a confession. That wasn't a repentance, but we repent. We turn from our sin and we walk in God's righteousness. We, we obey him now. Now, People saying this is a little violent, but violence is the way that we need to deal with sin in our lives. If we if we sit there and say, well, you know, I'm going to gradually pull away from sin. Sin is going to have a stronger and stronger attraction over us. 
I, I admire those people that quit smoking cold turkey. <laughs> they just said, hey, I need to stop it. People that have prayed to God and said, God, I need you to take the taste out of my mouth right now because I don't want this to be a gradual thing because if I make it gradual, then it might can pull me back in. I, I need to cut this out of my life. There are some relationships that we have to cut out of our lives because it is a relationship that has us looking and desiring and taking. Anyway, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, it says, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus is. So the defeat at I came after a big win. And so we have to be vigilant to watch against pride and other tricks of the enemy after a spiritual victory because we suffer the consequences for disobeying the Lord, but God is willing to forgive us when we turn to him. So if there's no questions, I'll go ahead and get to my practical points. First practical point, true victory can only be had when we fully obey God. See, the there was this temporary victory, uh, victory over Jericho. But remember, they got to go in and possess the whole land. And that was almost averted because sin came into the camp. So they had to violently take sin out of the camp and then fully obey God so that God would come back in and help them take the entire land. We often blame God for our failure instead of recognizing the consequences of our own and other sin. So here's Joshua laying down on his face, crying, God, why did you bring us here? And all of this so that we could get destroyed. But Joshua didn't examine, hey, did we follow God's uh, instructions to the fullest? See, he was the leader here. And so he had to ask himself, uh, as a leader, did I do everything that I was supposed to do? But it, it was good that he fell down on his knees and prayed to God. I mean, th there were some other avenues he could have taken. He could have said, you know what? Uh, maybe we should have just took all of Israel. You know, the spies might have been wrong. We, we should have took all of Israel. And the fact is, is that that wasn't going to work because God had already taken his hand off of Israel because they had broke the covenant. So when failure comes, don't blame God. Look for, look for what is the reason in my life that's happening. It, it might not be my sin. It might be somebody else's sin because we need to understand that our sin affects our community. Uh, point number three, beware. Looking turns into coveting and sinful coveting turns into sinful action. I think there's enough said on that, right? Uh, number four, public acts of judgment should always be based on demonstrable facts. So, I, I, I sort of liken this to when I'm, I used to be an administrator, a uh, uh, principal, and it was, it was okay that somebody told me that somebody did this, but I need a little bit more evidence than just one person saying, hey, that was the person that did it. Sometimes I even got more evidence when it was a person that told me they did it. Because uh, I found 
that sometimes people will lie to protect somebody else. So even in the face of demonstrable, wait, wait, what is it? Public acts of judgment should always be based on demonstrable facts. So before you go and punish somebody, make sure that you got the facts. Number five, sin always impacts us and those around us. That That's a very important takeaway from this lesson that sometimes we think that there are these little sins. All sins impact us and impact the people around us. And then finally, God's anger burns until his people fully turn from their sin. Now, I, I want to sort of answer a question that hasn't been asked, but uh, probably has seeped into people's minds. Wait, Aiken's sons and daughters, his whole family, had to be stoned? That's not right. But Ezekiel chapter uh, 18, verse 20, this is what it says. The one who sins is the one who will die. The child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them. So, all of the stuff being planted in, I mean, I, I got to think that Aiken's household knew that the stuff was there. It's possible that they didn't, but I, I think they were all punished because they were all in on it. So there's that. All right. So, uh, Minister Angela, are you available? Evidently not. Yes. Just okay. took a minute yeah. to get to my mute. No, no problem. <laughs> no problem. I was wondering if you could uh, say our closing prayer. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the word on tonight. Thank you for your grace, God. As we know, we have all fallen short of your glory. God, I know we have all found our places, um, found ourselves uh, sinning against you. And we thank you for your grace of forgiveness. I thank you for the reminder in this lesson on tonight that our sin not only affects us, but others around us, Father. I pray, God, that as we move uh, through this journey, oh God, that we will be more mindful, God, of our choices. And Lord, that we'll be sure to, re to be quick to repent in the name of Jesus. But more importantly, God, to grow closer to you so that our sin is not... Um, so prevalent in the name of Jesus. Name uh, of God, Jesus. I thank you for our pastor and teacher on tonight. Continue to bless him, oh God, as he studies your word so that he can um, teach us. Thank you for each and every one who's been on the line tonight to hear the lesson, oh God, and I pray that we have taken every word to heart. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. Amen. Thank you uh, for tuning in to Wednesday night Bible study. Again, if you have questions, you could go ahead and put them in the comment section and we'll reply. Also, uh, if you have prayer requests, they could go in the comment section or you could text your prayer request to 209-565-2116. Also, we appreciate any, uh, we appreciate any comments that you have. And if you could go ahead and click like and share this lesson with somebody that needs it, and we'd appreciate it if you subscribed also. Thank you. I've been Pastor Henry Phillips for the Open Door House of Prayer and Wednesday night Bible study.